On Christmas Day 2018, I was bought something rather special. Something that would change my life forever. A bucket list of video games, which in retrospect may mean that my sister knows something that I don't. But nonetheless, there's this poster, and it has 100 games on it. 100 games to play pretty much before you die. And speaking as a rather unhealthy 28 year old male, I figured why not start going through to this now? And why not start by making videos on each of the games for you guys at home to enjoy? So today I take a look at the first game on that list. And I... well, it's kind of a well-known title. It's Tetris. Originally created by a software engineer in Moscow in the 1980s, Tetris is definitely one of those games. You know the kind of game that your mums played? And not just played like people's mums who have played Sonic or Mario, but actually sat down and played for hours and hours like most people have with Tetris. In fact, in January 2010, it was announced that the Tetris franchise had sold more than 170 million copies. Approximately 70 million physical copies and over 100 million copies for cell phones alone, making it the best selling paid downloaded game of all time. But let's get into the game. Now, Although the bucket list holds 100 games, it's not incredibly particular. For example, later on down the list is a title named NBA, and in this case, this title is simply named Tetris. So uh, do I play the 2018 release of Tetris for the PlayStation 4, the one that EA fucked up, or do I play the original that was released in June 1984? Well, I can make that decision rather quickly, because I don't own a PS4. And hey, don't judge me, I I'd love a PS4, I really would. But, uh, well, I got a PC and a Switch and an Xbox One. Do I really need a PS4? I think I'm going to have to readdress this issue somewhere down the line. Because there's definitely some games on the list that uh, require me owning a PlayStation. So I'm going to be honest with you. I really wanted to play the original 1990 version of Tetris for the original Game Boy. But it's really not something that's easy to capture. So I've ended up playing this weird version of Tetris, which I guess was probably the last release on PC for Tetris, known as Poyo Poyo Tetris. So to kick us off, this game is incredibly bright and colourful. Lots of bright colours, apart from that of the actual grid which Tetris is played. As always, the background is a simplistic black with the bright colours of the Tetri feeling the screen as they fall down and into place. After thrashing through the tutorial, I decided to try out Battle to see if the game plays the way it should. You know, like Tetris! And of course there's a character select screen and an option presented. Do I want to play Poyo Poyo or Tetris? And we're here to play Tetris, so I chose Tetris. My opponent on the other hand picks Poyo Poyo and proceeds to absolutely thrash me almost immediately. This game has absolutely no mercy on beginners it would seem. After another game where I was defeated, I tried out the marathon mode to see how many lines I could get in under two minutes. And this is the Tetris I remember. Colourful, simplistic, and with a touch of anime that wasn't present and honestly really isn't needed. After an hour or so of play, I was used to how this game plays and how it expects me to play. But I really don't see how you can add Poyo Poyo to the mix and have it actually be a positive over what the incredibly simplistic Tetris formula is from the beginning. In preparation for this video, I decided to have a look around at the newest release of Tetris. And unfortunately, it turns out that the newest release of Tetris, and what actually seems to be one of the best versions of Tetris to come along in a very long time, is in fact a PlayStation 4 exclusive. Now the game I'm talking about is called Tetris Effect. Now the gameplay in most Tetris games seems to be the same. You have several shapes on screen, you rotate them and you fit them into a rather neat column. Now, when you eventually drop a shape that lines up completely and creates an entire grid of shapes, as soon as that last block drops, the wall that you've created from your different combinations of shapes then disappears. Now, there is one long piece in the game of Tetris and if you happen to drop that down into your wall itself, that one piece will then completely eradicate the entire wall that's in front of you. Now, once that happens, the beautiful thing that you've just created it is called a Tetris. 
Now, in the game Tetris Effect, you kind of have all these different systems at play that enhance the way that we understand and we play Tetris. Now, in the original game of Tetris itself, the most number of lines that you can get rid of at one time is five, which in itself is a Tetris. Now, with Tetris Effect, you actually have a system at play where you can slow time down and you can create several Tetrises at once. Although on the surface this sounds incredibly gimmicky, and it definitely is, it's a PlayStation VR game, they're all pretty fucking gimmicky, gonna be honest with you. This one actually goes ahead and goes that extra step. See, Tetris Effect has this incredible music system. Now, every single time that you actually rotate a shape on screen, there's a sound being played. And in the very first level of the game, which is the music that I used at the beginning of this video, in fact, when you rotate a shape, the sound that plays is actually from the singer of the song's voice itself. So the people behind Tetris Effect have actually gone out of their way to re-record brand new sounds for when you're playing Tetris. This ends up creating is it kind of makes Tetris into like a musical game and combining that with the VR experience it actually creates quite an emotional visual experience especially for people out there who can listen to music and find themselves being emotionally attached to songs um, like myself through editing this video I am now completely addicted to the very first song that's played in the E3 trailer for Tetris um, because it's quite an emotional and quite a moving song that's played. The soundtrack of Tetris has always been incredibly strong. The very first Tetris game that I ever played, which is the 1990 Game Boy version, had four songs available, and all four songs, they totally stand up to today. The first track has its own style to it, and every game that you play with that first soundtrack will feel kind of different than the other ones that you play. Now, the second and third and fourth, although completely different songs, they all have their own feeling and their own meaning to them. Now, each song kind of comes across kind of like Arabic, which I suppose kind of plays into the intro of um, Tetris itself. Fast forward to today when you've got Tetris Effect, again the music is absolutely stellar. I gotta say that the first song in Tetris Effect is absolutely incredible, um, and there's another song that kind of ha has uh, the same vocalist and the same kind of style as that first track, but um, the rest of the tracks in Tetris Effect, they don't really hold up. Um, the music in Puyo Puyo Tetris, on the other hand, which is the other Tetris game that I played for this video, uh, it sucks, it's terrible, it's repetitive, it's bland, it's whatever. To me that game is like a kid's game. To me that's like baby's first Tetris. Even though the original Tetris that came out in the 1980s or the 1990s is already baby's first Tetris. The game cannot get any more simple than that. Now to freshen things up, I decided to jump into a different format of Tetris. One that's found in a fighting game, hidden away behind menus. That's right, it's Puzzle Combat, found in Mortal Kombat Deception on the GameCube and PlayStation 2 consoles. So the main thing with this one is you've got to try and line up the colours, and then basically you you get these special blocks that actually eliminate the colours when they come down and once you eliminate the colours it actually sends an attack onto your enemy now of course at this point I'm playing as um, Scorpion and this is uh, well it's not really Tetris um, it's, this is basically a mini game that you find in the game Mortal Kombat Deception um, and it's uh, well I mean this is puzzle combat hey you're playing Mortal Kombat 
No, dude, I'm not playing Mortal Kombat. I'm, I'm, I'm playing Tetris. Ah, you can't lie to me. I know what that is. That's Mortal Kombat. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is Tetris. I mean, it looks like Tetris, and it plays like Tetris. You said if you were going to play fighting games, you'd call on me. I'd show up. I'd beat the fighting games for you. Here you are. You're playing Mortal Kombat. I can see it. I know, look, I know, I know that when I when I play fighting games, I'm supposed to grab you, you're the fighting game. He's the side of me that plays fighting games, okay? I kind of have this whole thing where I'm, I'm terrible at fighting games. He's really good at fighting games. I, it's this whole thing. Hopefully we never get into it. All right, dude. Look, I'm, I'm not actually playing Mortal Kombat. What I'm playing is Puzzle Kombat. It, it's very different. Uh, I guarantee you, that it's this is what Tetris is. I, 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 I guarantee you, you won't even like this game. It does. I mean, there's blood. That's not sure. Tetris. But um, that's not the, the point. The point is like to play Tetris. It's know? not Tetris. There's no Tetris game that exists that has blood in it or scorpion fighting Baraka. It's not Tetris. You're playing Mortal Kombat. You think you could slip it past me? I'm, s I'm sure it's Tetris. I mean, it plays just like Tetris, right? If that's Tetris, then where's the straight block? And where's the block that's like a Z? And the block that's like a triangle? They're not present. You're clearly just playing Mortal Kombat. It's not Tetris. So what you're saying is that this isn't Tetris. This is actually just Poyo Poyo. You think? Right. So when I was playing Poyo Poyo Tetris, I wasn't actually playing Tetris. I was actually playing Poyo Poyo. Okay. N now I get it. Okay. I, I, I understand. Right. Okay. Good. When you play Mortal Kombat, you call on me. I'm going to show these scrubs a lesson. Okay, so now I'm back looking at actual Tetris. I'm not just messing around. I, I swear this time I'm not actually playing Mortal Kombat. For fuck's sake! Said Mortal Kombat. I'm here. Alexa, tell me a fact about Tetris. Here's a fact about Tetris. Tetris's genre is puzzle. I honestly thought she'd have more to say about Tetris, actually. What can be said about Tetris in 2019? Well, Tetris effect kind of proves that the formula isn't dead yet. Although I kind of feel like you could take any genre of game and give it that Tetris effect style makeover and you'd probably end up with something just as amazing as what you actually get in Tetris effect. So what does the future hold for Tetris? It's Tetris. It's always going to be around. As I said in the beginning, it's one of those games that um, I really hope that more people right now are playing Tetris than are playing, say, Fortnite or Realm Royale or something. My closing thoughts on Tetris, I think it's a really good example of a game where you can take an idea or something and you can turn it, you can freshen it up and you can clean it so many times and you can release it on every single console, on the PlayStation 1, 2, 3 and 4 and it will stand out and still be a really good game because the idea at the beginning, the idea that the guy had in 1984 was so solid and so simple and so enjoyable that spreading that across and bringing it to every console in its simplest form will always still deliver. You don't need to twist the formula. That's kind of what playing Puyo Puyo Tetris has shown me. You don't need to change Tetris to make it good. You just have to take those beautiful little things and then blow them up. And that's exactly what Tetris Effect does with this game. So to close off this episode, do I recommend you play Tetris? Yes. Do I recommend you play Tetris Effect? Yes. Do I recommend you play Puyo Puyo Tetris? No. Do I recommend you play Mortal Kombat? 
Deception. Yeah, totally. <laughs> you really should. Mortal Kombat Deception is amazing. Um, going forward in these videos, I, I do want to kind of touch on the story of some games, and I want to touch on like the gameplay elements of some games. But with Tetris, the story that's being told is that this game is so simplistic that it doesn't need a story. The story that comes with Tetris is the story of the guy in 1984 in Russia who made the game. His story is the story that you need to learn. His story is the one that you need to experience by reading the several books that are out there based on Tetris and based on the making of Tetris itself. To close this episode out, I want to kind of say like, I think the first 10 episodes I'm going to kind of serve as like a season one. This obviously is the pilot, so I hope you enjoyed it. If you're watching this right now, that means you kind of got to the end, so good for you. Um, yeah, this is like the pilot. Hopefully this people like it. People look some comments and let me know what they like about it. Also, I really want to know if people want me to go through the list in order. So you want me to do from left to right. Or if you want me to maybe throw a dart on the board and see what it lands on. And just do a completely random take, a look at the poster and just go, Yeah, today I'm going to play this one. Three down, five across. Boom, that's the game I'll play. I hope you enjoyed this video a hundred times. I'm fucking, I'm out of here. I'm gone, I'm going. Bye. Alright, so we've got one chance to make this work. So let's make the best out of it. Game number one, well and truly spoken about.